the baby wasn't a human being until it could speak at one year of age. Its own emotional, social intelligence starts at birth. That may be quite surprising to you. For the first hour of life, mothers and babies should be together. And how does it know that it's safe to settle down? Because at birth, the baby wants to know the smell is mother's smell. It's exactly what I was in the uterus. I've been born, I've come out, but I'm with mother, I'm safe. The amygdala says, I'm safe. It also does so with the help of something called the periaqueductal drain. But we'll leave that one for now. And contact is this pressure, warm pressure, that says, this is where I was in the uterus. I'm being held, I'm tight, I'm safe. Those two sensations, fire and wire, that amygdala, to the prefrontal cortex over here. This pathway is a very important pathway. And this pathway is now the emotional center. So whatever positive emotion that this amygdala decides that it's feeling, it will fire the left prefrontal orbital cortical tract, which is the approach pathway. The right is the avoid. So now, I will always be able to make the good choice about approaching something nice and then fall off the podium, or I will uh, avoid the podium and step back. <laughs> you were nice to approach, but the, we make these choices. On a constant basis, I'm going to cross the street, is it safe? No, yes, I approach, I avoid. It's a very basic choice you make every single minute of your day. And it's processed right here. So that this positive emotion enables me to fire and wire my emotional processing unit to my executive function. Executive function is not a computer term, it's a psychological term for the frontal lobe of the brain. It's the higher function that decides to overrule basic animal instincts and be a real human that can make moral choices. Furthermore, they said prefrontal activation, frontal lobe, remember, around the anterior of the frontal cortex is specific to viewing their mother's smile. When they saw the mother smile, the, period, the fusiform gyrus coded up. And when the mother smiled, this approach area lit up. And now the amygdala is rewarded and it sees that smile, it activates that approach pathway. And so it's a reciprocal behavior between mother and baby in the small social world between an infant and its mother are considered to be the primary means by uh, which infants prepare for human social activities. Emotional and social intelligence are firing and wiring in the newborn brain the first hour of its life. And so now, it's not the first hour, that's when the cortex was fired. Now the baby needs to sleep so that it wires that back to the amygdala, back to the occipital lobe and back to the frontal lobe, to the executive function, so it's got a circuit. And that takes us hour, four or five hours of sleep, and then it needs to experience this again, to fire and wire. Remember the repeated firing and wiring was what made this happen? And so in fact, it, it takes two months to mature that pathway from the amygdala to the frontal lobe. Some babies do this fine in two weeks, some need an extra two months. Uh, so it's very variable, but the key thing is it's the baby's time to fire and wire. Its own emotional, social intelligence starts at birth. And so skin contact fires the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe then says, I'm going to approach. What am I going to approach? To approach anything, I've got to open my eyes. So the next circuit opens the eyes. We were in the NICU just now. We were working on a 32-week baby. We put it skin to skin, and I said, come and look at this baby's eyes. And we came and look, and then I said to mom, okay, talk to the baby. And she started talking, and the baby went, huh? That means that I fired and wired the amygdala to the frontal lobe. This baby feels safe, therefore this baby is approaching, therefore this baby is learning social and emotional intelligence. Mother skin, baby skin, amygdala, mother, amygdala, baby. So their amygdalas are talking to each other, their emotional biologies are talking to each other. And so this was their first language. And it's the autonomic nervous system that is being governed in this way. The autonomic nervous system of the baby then becomes the mother's heart rate, which is nice and slow, becomes the baby's heart rate. The mother is able to help her baby's developing brain develop set points or templates for, this is my normal heart rate when mom is talking to me, and that's my normal heart rate. 
And now fire and wire are left in my brain. It's called a set point. And then when I'm eating, I need more heart rate, and then that's a nice set point. So now this is my normal range. And I can do the same with my appetite. I can do the same with my oxytocin level. I can do the same with uh, my blood pressure. I can do the same. And now, mother helps me regulate. Now, when mother's not there and I get dysregulated, because my set points are wired in my brain, I can bring myself back to normal again. The ability to do that is defining for health. You just get contact. Helps the baby achieve stability through change. And that's a foundation for its health. Breastfeeding is about brain wiring. It's giving all the sensations to the brain, which is a sensory organ, and lives on sensations. And it becomes a social organ in the process. That's the neuroscience of breastfeeding. And so, if we only talk about nutrition, you can compare it to a formula, and you can say it's this, and this, and this, and that, but that's not the point. It's about brain wiring, social and emotional intelligence.